This is another episode of UFO Garage. I'm Ben. And I'm Joe. And this is where we talk about UFOs, aliens, and all things weird. Kooky. Weird. So I got a call from a friend that said, hey, uh, check this little segment out on the news. We're going to roll a clip for you right now. Check it out. Welcome back. Time for the Fastest 7. That was such an appropriate intro song because remember those crazy UFO videos we showed you? The U.S. Navy is confirming for the first time that footage of three encounters released in 2017 are in fact genuine, but can't explain or won't explain what they actually are. The Navy says they're working to fully investigate them. I have to say, though, you guys, we'd be remiss if we didn't point out that now it's unexplained aerial phenomena. That's the appropriate term for the government who know about UFOs. <laughs> Greg, your thoughts. Wait, wait, you know what Greg's going to say, don't you? What? Mosquitoes. No, I'm going to say that, wow, you're actually admitting they can't identify it. (laughs) Jeez. Look, there's three. We we haven't had any communication with aliens, and here's why. Either one, we're too early in the universe and they're not born yet. (laughs) Number two, we're the last in the universe and they're all dead. Number three, artificial intelligence took over every planet, and now they're just metal orbs floating in space. Mm. Wait, didn't you tell me you thought that there was a mosquito or a fly on the... The, the cockpit. Yes, yes. Then, was it that one or it was another one? It was yeah. another one. I can't remember. Oh, okay. We do a lot of these shows, Juan. All right. Who are you again? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a big ant. All right, Greg. You got really? <laughs> really? You said, okay, three options. Okay, first of all, you're a news anchor. <laughs> I want to know your sources, buddy, because if you have those two, three options, I want to know who you're talking yeah, talking to, seriously, man. Because man, that is some br- groundbreaking stuff. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah, dude. seriously. Oh my god! A mosquito, a fly. Oh, you do so many of these. How how many of these have you done? Really? I mean, really? Because because uh, from from what I am understanding, um, this news just broke yesterday. Yeah, it's been all over the place. Oh, oh, the Navy confirms that there are UFOs, guys. I think we've been talking about this for a long time. Long time. We've we've been saying this for a, a long time now, and uh, they're just now breaking this news. It's it's kind of blowing my mind a little bit took me back a little bit dude like when we got the call so yeah i mean I, we've been talking about this for a couple of months since we or yeah about three or four months since we started the podcast i mean we've talked about it on multiple episodes but this came out in 2017 i mean uh to the stars academy broke this video and it's been on the internet like you were saying like it's been on our facebook feed f- forever yeah <laughs> and now now that you know fox news is coming out with the, uh, i said fox news oops uh, anyway but like <laughs> Dude, all the news outlets are coming out with it, though. But all the news just so happen to be this one. They have been reporting on it, but I guess this is somehow new that the Navy has confirmed that these are unexplained things. Yeah. But, dude, Greg, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Dude, there's three options. All right, you got three options, and I know one of them (laughs) is that uh, uh, we haven't contacted them yet. There's no, there's no gray area. There's nothing in between, right? Uh, is that another one? Is that we're too late and they've already been here? And as well, and also, <laughs> and furthermore, then, and then the third one is the most laughable one. I mean, <laughs> the whole universe has been taken taken over by AI, and they're just metal orbs in the sky. Just metal, also, metal balls floating around that, in space. Just that phrase. They're just metal orbs in the sky. Yeah. I mean, what that. that <laughs> Even if they were metal orbs in the sky, they're definitely not just metal <laughs> orbs in the sky. Yeah. The scoffing in the background, too, is just <laughs> really good. <laughs> like, there's, there's a lot of snickering going yeah. on. I don't know, man. It's you just, know what he's going to say, right? It's a mosquito. You know what, it's gonna, you know what he's going to say, right? <laughs> uh, we've done so many of these. <laughs> 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 How oh, hilarious. God. How man. hilarious. Dude, just when you think like, okay, maybe maybe like that's what you get for relying on the media though. It's like it's like, okay, you might you okay, we might get some some like credible information. Like here we go. That's that's kind of cool. And then they they pull some shit like that. It, but like, it's going to be masks. It's going to be masks in a way that's going to be culturally uh, goofy, yeah. In, like in it's, a way. it's just a joke. Like I know we goof around, but uh-huh. it's in a way different context. We're not making fun of this. We're laughing along with. We're making light of this situation. That's right, like, right. You know yeah, what I mean? No, There's a difference. It's completely different. If you listen to this show before, if you're just tuning in, we're goofballs, but we're never laughing at this subject. We are so interested in this subject. If you've been listening to to uh-huh. this show for a long time, you know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, dude. I think. Uh, <laughs> We actually have some sources now that would com- 
completely destroy this guy oh, yeah. in, in his, uh, there's only uh, three <laughs> options. Uh, we know some people that would completely disagree with you. And I think if you just took some time, sat down, and looked it up, uh, you would probably disagree with yourself as I, well. If we had Greg on the show, he would change his mind. If yeah. he really sat down and like took it, like, it's, all right. He, if he talked to us or maybe one of our sources, I, I completely agree. He would, he would, I think he would come around. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I'm, I don't mean to vilify these people, but this is getting old. Yeah. Yeah. Th- it's horse shit, dude. Complete and total horse shit. Yeah. Like, like, okay. So the, so <laughs> it's like, what is it going to take for, for you to, to believe it? I mean, so, okay. The Navy, the Pentagon, the Air Force, they've they've all said, okay, look, this this stuff is real. the The Pentagon has released papers, dude. Like that's yeah. like, that's that's, I mean, other than these like secret programs that are super compartmentalized. I mean, that's that's pretty much the highest you go, right? Or we just, we just <laughs> I mean, or we just can just believe Greg that he said aliens aren't contacting us, so we could just stop there. Yeah, we can just stop we, and we should just Greg. we could just quit the podcast we should just stop being interested in this subject pack our shit right? up and go home yeah dude. let's pack it up bro. yeah totally totally I'm, yeah let's do it no no not at all <laughs> not at all greg <laughs> fucking not greg at all dude Greg. anytime I that wanna... guy that uh, guy sounds like he buys his, his clothes all of his clothes at macy's <laughs> all of them <laughs> underwear socks all of his suits greg his seems like the sh- kind of guy that wears <laughs> mediums <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay not a knock on macy's they've got some quality stuff but you know that's like some middle class fancy you know <laughs> Bro, greg you kind of it's irritating buddy mm-hmm. it's irritating why would you why would you do that i mean i mean come you on obviously you obviously don't know anything about the subject right yeah right i mean we make mistakes all the time but it, it, we're you know we're trying to learn about it at least. Yeah. This fool is just just closed minded. He's already made up his mind. What, yeah, he's on like on. a massive like media outlet. Yeah, and he's just like, oh yeah, what a joke, ha! Huh? Mosquitoes, <laughs> it's a fly. Uh, really, dude, a fly on the cockpit <laughs> yeah. uh, of a jet of a well trained air force air or air force or navy pilot. That's it's a personnel that's meant to protect our country, and you're saying that guy's lying. Yeah. And the most sophisticated tracking equipment in the world on this planet, and you're uh-huh. saying that that okay, you're right, and that t- equipment is is faulty. Yeah, that's okay. Wrong. That's what he's saying. Though. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he's saying. Yeah, chief petty officers <laughs> coming out and saying, uh, "Yo, I tracked a hundred of these things coming out of the sky at one time." He's a complete and total bullshit artist, huh? Is that what you're saying, Greg? Mm. Like, yeah, you're you're supposed to. I mean, yeah, yeah. So so you basically are completely discrediting our uh, our military i don't think i think it's i think he made himself look dumb i think i think greg made an ass of himself as well all right uh enough about greg <laughs> enough about greg it, it, it let's take one positive thing from this is that it's being reported on major news outlets and people like uh uh we're getting calls from are listening that's where they get their news sources from yeah, so at right, least right. it's in these news it's being syndicated through these major news, news yeah, outlets yeah and it's being seeded in their mind that this is a real a real thing that's going on yeah so it, it is vali- it's it's bringing validity to this subject yeah they're gonna get some facts wrong just like we did so yeah. i mean i think we're both in agreement on uh, on that i mean uh, yeah but it, it seems like greg has an agenda it really does like greg had a, an, ag- <laughs> an agenda to yeah. completely discredit the whole thing you know what i'm saying <laughs> Like, he was like, oh, so they finally confirmed that it's unidentified. Like, yes. Yes. Yeah. Why you got to say it like that? Yeah. It's ex- <laughs> yeah. Oh, so they finally. So let me get this straight, Doug. Doug, sorry. Greg. Greg. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Doug. Sorry, Doug. What's up, Doug? Doug. Hey, we're going to have Doug. Douglas Smythe on the podcast tonight, you guys. Yeah, Phoenix shaving. Phoenix shaving, boy. Oh, guys, get boy. ready. It's it's sick. We got it. We got a pretty sick conspiracy for you guys oh, tonight. Yeah. The shaving conspiracy. Yeah. But yeah, sorry. Back to Greg. Yeah, Greg. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> hey, Greg. Let me get this straight. The Navy doesn't know what they're talking about, but, but you, you know, <laughs> you know that there's three possibilities, dude. Why aren't you working for the Navy, bro? You know what? He should apply. Dude, Greg, let's, if let's you're listening, Greg, email. you should probably go apply. Yeah, you should work for the Pentagon, dude, because oh you God. know, I mean, you've blown the, the case open, wide open, bro. Like, no use in us being here anymore, man. Like, Greg knows. 
Greg knows. We There's, should start a website called Greg knows. Dude, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> like, I mean, quote him exactly as he's. Uh, I don't know. That's Greg. You're brilliant. Good job, Greg. He's uh, he's the new spokesperson for UFO Garage Podcast with no, Greg. He we're gonna is ch- not. We're gonna change the name to with Greg. We're gonna add it. Oh God. <laughs> Greg UFO, Greg Garage, Greg Podcast. Greg. Yeah, all of it with Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, oh God. So get out uh, here, Greg. So do you want to do you want to share? I mean that that uh, story you were telling me because I thought that was super interesting. I thought maybe we'd add that to this podcast. Do you? Let me get a little more information on it, and then right. we'll share. It. Okay. Let me get a little more information on it, but it's it's incredibly uh in- incredibly uh. Interesting. Interesting. Greg Tristan. <laughs> I almost said incredibly incredible. Ingre- ingre- <laughs> ingregable. Uh, <clears throat> if you if you guys uh, get a chance to check out Eric Mitchell, that's this that's the story that we're gonna kind of nice. talk about a little bit later. But uh, if yeah. you get a chance, just go and look him up on your own because dude, his story is awesome. Yeah. I, I've only heard his story. <clears throat> Through a uh, through like one channel, Lauren so, Fenton. Yeah, so I want to I want to listen to him speak on this story through a couple more little outlets and see what else he's got to say. Yeah, because I, I want to get like a, a full spectrum of the story. Nice, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, yeah, he's he's got some cool stuff to say. Nice, but uh, yeah, bro, cool. Well, you you want to go ahead and just Let's, drop drop Doug in real quick? Y- yeah, we can drop Doug in. Okay, cool for sure. Well, I, we we talked about doing this little segment and then talking about your story for a second but do you want to talk about the oh yeah the video that was cool okay dude okay on the facebook uh the ufo garage podcast group uh who who originally posted that that video i think it was dan dan what's up dan 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 warren what's up dude uh awesome awesome post um if it's on youtube if you want to watch it uh it's called outstanding it's a really long really long title but it says outstanding close-up video of Iranian anti-aircraft artillery trying to shoot down a UFO September seventh. Jesus, that's a long title. Yeah, but yeah. if you want to, st- if you want to follow <laughs> along or just go to the group, click on this video. I mean, so it's pretty sick. It is so sick. So what you're seeing, if you're just listening and you're not watching the video, uh, it's basically this nighttime video of tracer bullets. I mean, thousands of them shooting off, and it is. So I just, it's, it's on the Iranian side. So it's not a military, uh, base shooting. It's an Iranian anti-aircraft artillery. Yeah. So yeah. it's the Iranians shooting down or trying to shoot down this aerial plane. And you can clearly see this plane. And at first it just looks like this moving white light, but when it gets closer, it just does a few passes and it looks like a triangle triangle. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just dodging <clears throat> and it's doing like these stair step maneuvers and nothing's hitting it. Yeah, so insane. Dan was saying it looks like kind of like a boomerang. It yeah, does kind of have like this boomerang look <laughs> yeah, so, to it. Yeah. Somebody said, "Oh, it must be made in Australia." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, dude. But it's a uh, um, tr. Yes. Yeah, so either either that's a a badass pilot or Iranian anti aircraft artillery is really shitty. Yeah, because dude, I mean that's like that's that's got to be close to a thousand rounds that they're firing oh, yeah. off just right there oh more than that but uh yeah i mean well we can t- see in the frame at least you know yeah, but you, it, see dude. How, you see the frame yeah uh yeah so philip knight was like yeah maybe it's a tr3b which i think uh-huh. a lot of people that are into the subject know what that is and it's uh, apparently a military plane called a tr3b that's uh, a back engineered that's utilizing back engineered alien technology that's used yeah, for the uh, it's harnessing propulsion. zero point energy yeah yeah uh, for the propulsion yeah and and, it, and at first to me it looks like it's it's really being affected by by the wind and you know like conventional aircraft have to follow the rules of gravity and 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 the way it moves through the air so it's definitely like banking and rolling there's some pitch going on but there's a few moments like you you pointed out that it kind of dropped you know, I yeah, don't know how many yeah. feet, maybe a hundred feet in, in, you know, a split second. And then mm-hmm. it like kind of did that stair step little maneuver. Yeah. So it's kind of like a mix between the two to me. Yeah, it like, looks like. like maybe, maybe they can, they can, uh, like kind of dr- like, you know, draw back the, the anti-gravitic energy around it, you know? Uh, yeah. So maybe they can fly around and do fun things like that. Yeah. You know, but, but if they need it, 
they can kind of amp it up right and they can just strictly use that right, right? It, it, to me it looked like so i've been watching a lot of uh, uh this this youtube channel called flight test and they all do rc planes and it looks like the maneuver maneuverability of an rc plane it's going that fast but this thing i mean if you take in the account of how far away it is in this video, it looks huge. I mean, it doesn't look like yeah, a tiny it, it RC plane. It looks pretty big. It looks um, pretty big. And also, the whole thing is glowing, glowing white. So what does that? I mean, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I'd have to think that this camera is not in night vision. It's just regular, um, you know, regular regular optics because uh-huh. I mean, there's no green hue to it. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's a really really weird video. It looks awesome though. Um, yeah, dude. That's uh, it's that looks that looks crazy. Yeah, it's definitely got a, 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 I don't know, man. Like We're watching it's it right just, it's now. Just, it's just super, it's super bright, dude. Like, it's not even trying to hide itself. You know, like, if it wanted to, it could just completely, like, go stealth, right? I would assume that, like, you wouldn't even be able to see it. Or just but zip dude, off into space. It is, yeah, or just zip off into space or, or you know, fly like, you know, uh, uh, the UFOs do, but... It's almost like this thing is playing with them. Yeah, it's it just came down to to play around. It does a few passes. It's like, ah, uh-huh. <laughs> like, eh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> or Man. or maybe it the is. The more I'm looking at it, it just looks like an RC plane, though. I know. You just know, like lit up, it like really they're does. trying to do target practice or something maybe that's at nighttime. It. That could be it. Dude. It could be it. Yeah, it could be it. But dude, I mean, they suck. <laughs> if that's what it is, <laughs> yeah. they suck. Right, because. I mean, you would look at that, dude. That is so that is, many rounds. That is thousands of rounds. That's crazy. And they're not even hitting it. So I mean, I wonder. I wonder how good that technology is with smaller objects. So maybe it is really tiny, and it's just those guns aren't aren't meant for that kind of target. I don't know. Yeah, you. I mean, it's they may as well have shot a shotgun, though. You know what I'm saying? It's right. kind of what it, what it looks like, dude. Like I mean, you can hit a dove. It's tiny. Yeah. If you use a shotgun, you got a better chance of using it. And they're unloading. Dude. They're unloading right now. Like, it's nuts. insane. Guys, go to the Facebook. This is a group page, right? Go to the group, yeah, the group. page and, and check it out. Tell us what you think because it's pretty crazy looking. It's pretty crazy looking. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Maybe, maybe that's what blew up the, the Saudi... Uh, oil fields oh uh-huh. i didn't read it i didn't click on the link but i did see that well they were uh, saying that like iranian drones like came over and, and blew up the oil fields and now it's like uh, you know like now america's like that's an act of war even though it didn't have anything to do with us <laughs> so huh. you know everybody's like on edge like oh are we gonna go to war again like oh shit i hope not what Damn a it. stupid idea but you know, it's it's crazy because it is September, uh, September yep. I mean, 7th, and the Iranians are shooting at this thing. Right. Like, I don't know. Maybe oh. they're just trying to start some shit. Bro. They're trying to start some shit. Yep. Dodge, dip, dock, dive, and dodge. Dip, dip, and dodge. <laughs> That's what it's doing, bro. That's what it's doing. But yeah, it looks pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty crazy, dude. Uh, What else we got? What else we got on here? Oh so, yeah. Let's see. Scroll down a little bit. Um, UFOs dude, and nukes. So that uh, that's a pretty crazy movie. I've been watching it. It's five hours long. Yeah, I read your comment on that. That seems yeah. like that's that's. I mean, I'm definitely down to, to watch. It's to got. Watch uh, it. I mean, it's got you know just eyewitness accounts and people who you know were in charge. And that's on UFO TV. Yep. Pre- UFO presence, TV. U- UFO TV presence UFOs and and nukes. That that title doesn't really make sense, but. Uh, UFOs and nukes, the secret link revealed. I mean, yeah, we've all heard those stories about like UFOs being present uh, when there's tests going off, or you know, around nuclear facilities that hold these missiles underground or in bases. And there's just always some some fuckery around it. I mean, didn't it, was Rendlesham a nuclear facility or no? Good question. Because that's one of the most famous ones. I, yeah. I was hoping that was going to be a tie in there, but huh. uh, maybe not. Yeah, I, I gotta. I mean, I gotta. I gotta finish watching. I'm almost done. Yeah, okay. I'm almost done. Nice. It's uh, but yeah, it's it's long, uh, but it's crazy because you know, like these military guys, they're like, yeah, we're sitting at the base, and all of a sudden, all the nukes activate. Uh-huh, they yeah. all activate, and we're freaking out, and then they stop. Yeah. Or you know, they they launch something like dummy missiles, and and uh, 
and the or they UFO just all like they just all turn off. Yeah, they turn off, or like, they turn into duds, and they fall apart. Yeah, or like you know, it, it's nuts, dude. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. I was watching this uh, this short video on, on on YouTube. I gotta find it, but uh, it, it was it was the Russians. It was all in Russian, but it, there were subtitles. Uh, but they were talking about and and there was video of these missiles going off and UFOs coming up out of the blue. They're little tiny white dots and they shot down these missiles and some of them were airplanes. Yeah. Have you seen those videos? Some just break on the thing. What was no, it? No, it's the, oh. it the little ball that screws on there. Oh, God. <laughs> it's breaking balls over here, dude. dude you know me. Oh, God. oh damn. It. I couldn't see the mic was in the way. <laughs> <laughs> it threw it at me I threw again. It again. <laughs> All right. Sorry, guys. The Russians. <laughs> yeah. The the old Ruskies. Sovi- the Soviets. Yes. So- Soviets. And so what was the thing? What was it saying? It was, I mean, it was kind of uh, talking about how, yeah, the UFOs ha- have shot down airplanes and, and missiles before. Here's uh-huh. some proof. Yeah. Here's some video of, of missiles being exploded by tiny little white mm-hmm. lights in the sky. Yeah. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, yeah. I don't know if those missiles were manned or maybe those, I think one was an airplane, man. And so they just shot it out of the sky. Shot it out of the sky, man. It's a huge explosion. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it was uh, Italy. Italy had uh, a helicopter that was flying. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the UFO came up behind it and, yep. and like shot a laser beam like through it didn't the, ex- the tail. Yeah, yeah. It and didn't they had explode to land it though. Yeah, they had to land. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, up until that point, I've been thinking like, man, these whoever they are benevolent or is it, is it benevolent or malevolent man, malevolent Mane, benevolent dude banana le, banana living <laughs> vanilla the one that means that they're nice <laughs> yeah uh, but i mean watching this video i mean take it for take it for uh-huh. what it is i mean there's proof of of these things just shooting down uh, russian airplanes back uh-huh. back in the day the same when i was watching um maybe they were carrying nukes oh maybe so uh, so the same when I was watching, there, there was a some really awesome footage of this craft that was found. This was like leaked documents and video that were obtained, you know, through through whatever organization of the Russians back in uh, I think the seventies. It was like seventy two or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're walking. It's a bunch of soldiers, Russian uh, Soviet soldiers, going out to this. Uh, farmland and there's like a line of trees and there's this big disc that's in the ground and they're walking all around it. There's two cameras. Whoa. It's pretty cool. I'll, I'll try to find it. I'll look through my history so yeah, I can, cool. we can post it on the Facebook so pe- other people can watch it, watch uh-huh. it, but it's pretty interesting, but it's that same, it's that same video that shows, Oh shit. Like planes and missiles being shot down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty crazy, dude. I mean, dude, I, I don't know, man. Like I, I there, there's something kind of weird about it. Right. But, th- but it's if they've been here this long, like, and they're here to destroy us. Why haven't they done it already? Yeah. You know, like, but it, it goes back to the whole, you know, yeah. There's good ones and there's bad ones. Mm-hmm. It's just like us, you know. Yeah, there's some that don't even care. It makes me think that there's some kind of galactic federation that prevents, uh, prevents the dis- the destruction of our our species and our yeah. planet. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. <clears throat> I, I know that sounds out there, but yeah. dude. That's the only thing I can think. There's maybe there's a political or diplomatic thing behind it. Or they're like, yeah, well they'll do it themselves. <laughs> or that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. If we want it, we just gotta wait. They'll kill themselves off. Yeah. Yeah, so, dude. I, I don't. I don't know, man. I don't know. So, so in this same video, man, I'm, I'm like, I, it's fresh on my mind because I watched it yesterday. Uh uh-huh. Um, the, in the same video, uh, the voiceover was talking about the uh, implement implementation. Ah, uh, blah. Implement. Shit, dude. Is it, <laughs> is it implication <laughs> or it's implication? Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it, I'm an idiot. Implications. Implications. Damn it. Implications. Implicationalisms. <laughs> Blah. That's like a George Bush word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nuclear. <laughs> Nuclear. There's no. <laughs> it's funny. Um, uh, the implications of a. Uh, nuclear bomb going off does span different dimensions because of the power that it creates. Yeah. Like it does mm-hmm. affect different dimensions. Mm-hmm. And that's, remember we talked about this, like, yeah. man, I bet something that powerful going off has to send some kind of wave across the universe or something. Yeah, dude. But yeah. it makes more sense that it, 
it communicates or it, it disperses some kind of energy transdimensionally, you mm-hmm. know? I don't know. And this, or just like if you look at again quantum entanglement uh, and then you set off an atom bomb. Right. Of course. Ah, yeah, there's atoms in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, did they even invent atoms in the, in the 70s? <laughs> Was there even flashlights? <laughs> yeah, dude. No, totally, totally. But uh, yeah, me and me and Dan were chit chatting about that uh, about this uh, this movie, and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he makes uh, he makes some good points. I mean, you know, like the stuff about the drones and things. How, yeah, uh, you know, uh, you could you could trick you know a society you know with a simple drone. You know, and I, I totally agree with which that. might have I totally agree with which that, might yeah. have been the explanation of the video we just watched. Yeah, you know, it I, could. I, it I very read. well could be. Yeah. It very well could be. But uh, yeah, uh, he doesn't so much believe in the in the von Braun thing. What von Braun was saying? What was he saying? Uh, so so basically, von Braun says that there's going to be the the enemies of the world. Oh, basically. right. One is going to be the Russians, Russians. Right. Two is going to be the terrorists. You know, three is going to be the third world, like, nut jobs, basically. Okay. Then we're going to move on to asteroids, and then the final phase of all of this for the final takeover is going to be, like, a false alien invasion. What uh, right? what's, what phase do you think, if, if that's true, what phase do you believe? Well, we, we have the Cold War, so the Russians are done with. Yeah. We just finished. We're still fighting Terrorist. terrorism, right? Right? The third world crazies. I mean, you got those all over the that's, place. You're looking at, like, Somalia and these, you know, like... These super, like, you know, poor countries that are you, you talking know, about have, the people like, that make wine uh, and shit. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not at all. You know, they have like their own, like, special regimes, and you know, they're, you know, it, it, there's places in the world, dude, where money doesn't, isn't worth anything anymore, you know? Yeah. Like, there's just these crazy, like, you know, third world leaders that, that are like, you know, genocide, you know, like, of their people and, and, yeah, that's. I mean, that's going on, right? So, and, and now we're up to asteroids. So this, I've, I remember, um, I remember there only being three. Why? I wonder why there's five now. Uh, For no, some reason, I, I thought there was three. Yeah, no, Am there's, I wrong? there's no. There's always been five. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think so. I thought um, it was just uh, Russians, terrorists, and then it skipped all the way to alien invasion. Yeah, no, I, I think, I think it's, it's always been. From, from what I've read, I've always, I've always heard the the other two. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I've always heard the other two as well. Okay. Um but yeah, dude, so we're we're to asteroids now. Damn. Uh it it happens very very often. Uh you see it in like science news and NASA and things like that. And they're like, "Oh, we narrowly mis- I know escaped uh, another meteor in- impact." Yeah. Uh like I guess uh before we left the Phoenix, there uh-huh. was a big ass one that like hit uh hitting like uh near like the uh the, like the Virgin Islands. Oh, there really? Was a giant one they hit out in the ocean, apparently. Really? So, like, I mean, Oumuamua, right? Like, that thing just zipped just zip by, by us. Yeah. Uh, There's a new one, though, too, that's that's coming from outside of our solar system. Yeah, That yeah. they're tracking, and they're like, yeah, awesome, we caught it. And they're um, looking, I mean, it's like a comet. There's, there's uh, you know, ice coming out from it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is pretty interesting. Yeah. I'm stoked to see what happens with that. Uh, last year, there was, like, two of them that came in through, like, the, the keyhole or whatever, which is in between the Earth and the Moon. Whoa! On the what? Earth side of it, so I mean, they're zooming past, and they're and they're, uh, yeah, they're going to become more frequent. They're going to become more frequent, and as we start to travel up on that spiral arm of the galaxy, and we start getting into more dust and debris and mm-hmm. stuff, I mean, dude, it's gonna it's it's gonna happen eventually. Shit! Right. So I mean, we're we're at that point of. Yeah. So we got to figure out a way to deflect these com- these asteroids mm-hmm. and comets. We, we got to figure out a way to be able to see them all. Yeah, because like the one that just hit before we left the Phoenix, they didn't even know it was there. It just boom, it hit. Yeah. Um, that giant one that flew over Russia and exploded. I think it was like two or three years uh-huh. ago. Yeah, I remember that, that one. Just blew out windows and shit. Yeah, like, yeah, dude. I mean, they didn't even see it. They didn't even know it was there. And that's a, a tiny one compared to what's out there. Super tiny. Yeah. Yeah. Very very tiny. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're down to asteroids, bro. Whoa. Dude. And, and now, now what we're seeing is we're seeing the UFO stuff. Mm. It just came out on the news. So it's all starting o- officially, the same. officially the military confirmed, uh-huh. right? That UFOs are real. This just came out on the news yesterday. 
you know, some organizations are, are calling them, you know, you know, uh, uh, enemy aircraft, you know, they're invading our airspace. They you know, did, they did aerial threats. They they're, did say in that, uh, segment that it's an aerial phenomenon. Mm-hmm. I don't think we let the recording go for, uh, as far as when they got to that point, but they did clarify that, oh, we're also calling them aerial phenomenon. Yeah. It was yeah. almost like they forgot. Uh huh. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll play it after this. But. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, so they're not uh, saying UFOs are real and aliens are real. They're yeah. saying these aerial phenomena. They're saying are these real. threats and uh, you know these things are invading airspace. And, yeah, you know. Well, like we were like talking that, about so. uh, on the last uh, episode, I think we were talking about. Oh, how do you get funding into a program? Oh, you have to make it a threat because the military industrial complex, military industrial complex, right, is is where you get all your uh, your resources and you know people getting together to make stuff. Yep. So you got to make it a threat to, mm-hmm. to have anybody take pay attention to it. Yeah, that it sucks. Makes sense. Yeah, it does kind of suck. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> I don't know. It sucks. Why can't we just do something because it should be a good idea? <laughs> it's, it's not human nature, man. <laughs> I mean, I do things because this should be a good idea. Yeah, I'll just most do people it because do. it's a threat. Yeah. It sucks. That's stupid. That's some lizard mentality, dude. I'm telling you, man. It really is. It yeah. really, really is. Yeah. But, but yeah, dude. Yeah, so... Uh yeah, if y'all haven't seen that one, uh, check it out. Also check out UFO TV. Uh, I got the full access UFO TV. Okay, bro. Yeah, there's so much cool stuff on there, man. Dope. There's so much stuff. Everything from like UFOs to suppressed technology. Uh-huh. Like that's a whole category. It's cool. it's suppressed technology. You could go through and look really? at all kinds of stuff. Yeah, uh, suppress like spirituality, like all kinds of things that have to do with the cabal and, and yeah. the world takeover, one world governments. Like it's nuts, dude. It Dang. goes super, super deep. Dang. Um, but yeah, dude, there's a lot more. Uh, Man, I, I'll get in trouble with, with that because I'll, I'll end up watching you know seven <laughs> hours of stuff, and then I won't remember. I will only remember fragments of it and then i'll come on the podcast and say what was that thing that I was watching? <laughs> Damn. you gotta watch it over and over again man i know i know over I gotta, like, stick that's why to it's one. taking me so long to finish this five hour one because mm-hmm. i keep having to go back yeah and start where like i started to fall asleep the, yeah the night before or whatever but start, yeah it's pretty sick i started listening back to graham hancock's <laughs> uh america before uh-huh and uh i i took notes and maybe we'll save it for another episode but man uh, it's some really profound stuff. I feel like we should do an episode or maybe just part one of let's take a look at the archaeological evidence that there has been many civilizations way, way older than what mainstream archaeology right. and paleon not paleontology, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. Historians totally. are saying, I, I think that would be, cause I, I think, think that's a huge, super cool. It's a huge part of this. Yeah. This, this big picture, this and nobody, story. Nobody talks about it. Yeah. Even Dan was saying, he was like, you know, the uh, Magicians of the Gods. It yeah. was a really, really good book, and it should have opened a lot of eyes, but right. he referenced there, and he was like, but it's crickets. Yes. Like, nobody's saying anything about it. Mm-hmm. Totally agree with that, dude. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, there is evidence of, of civilizations that exist way before yeah. what what current science says. Yeah, and, and this book, America Before, is strictly just in North America, and, uh-huh. you know, the United States, really. Um, yeah, Serpent Mound is one of the big ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really, really interesting. I also like wrote down a lot of numbers, which I think are important because we don't, <laughs> we don't talk about a lot of like, <laughs> all right, here are the numbers. Here's the timeline. It's pretty vague it's sometimes. pretty vague. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, yeah, if we want to, if we want to bring that up on that, maybe the next episode, do like a part one of, yeah, totally. Of, totally. Uh, Cause he's got a lot to say. Yeah, dude. He's got lot. so much to say. Yeah. His book is like, I had, I I, I kept having to like press pause, rewind, press pause, write yeah. notes. It's he's a very very good speaker and it speaks very fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. It looked like Joseph just posted something. Oh yeah, let's see what he did said. He? Did he post something on there? He said he said. Well, let's, see. let's see here. It's like he knew we were recording. I know. You know, I was thinking about we should have done this live. That would be cool. This right now, we should have done this live. <laughs> Oh my God! This <laughs> <That's> post. <hilarious. laughs> Two more days. Yep. Yep. Oh my God! That's so. Great. There's going to be a it huge is- party at uh, Area 51. Nobody's invading, right? Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Corbell Cor- was talking about this. Yeah, and, Corbell and, uh, was super stoked about yeah, it. Yeah, he's pretty amped up about it. Uh, yeah. No, totally. 
If you if you want to go out to Area 51, guys, there's gonna be a huge party out there. Yeah. There's gonna be it's gonna be basically like almost like a little conference. <laughs> Look at all these people running just with their yeah. hands back. What is that? The Naruto style yeah. or something? Whatever that is. <laughs> that giant alien in the background. So That's hilarious, big. dude. Yeah, but but it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a huge party. Apparently, it's gonna be pretty informational. Uh, maybe even caught word that something big is supposed to be happening soon. Um. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, guys. I mean, if if y'all are down, y'all want to go. Y'all should definitely go. Unfortunately, uh, you know, I, I'm not. I, I won't go. Yeah, I'm not gonna go. You no, know, I'm not gonna go. We should. We should. But well, dude. I mean, you know, my anniversary is coming up, so I can't. Yeah. I can't leave. You know. Yeah. Yeah, my anniversary is coming up, so that's gonna be sweet, dude. Dope. Yeah. Dope. Super dope. dope. Congrats, bro. Yeah. Thanks, bro. And then, uh, and then my birthday is coming up. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And and maybe we should. Uh, maybe we should prepare like in November, like to go do the JFK thing. Okay. If if, if uh, Lorian come comes to town, Lorian, yeah, yeah, yeah that'd like, be awesome. Hit her up and, and be like, uh, can we come hang out with you? Hell yeah, yeah dude, I'm yeah. down. Yeah, Let's that'd do be it. that'd be sick, bro. That'd be sick. That'd, that'd be, be awesome. Sweet. But uh, yeah, <laughs> Joseph knew. I think he knew, bro. What is that recent group photo? Oh, that's that's from uh, that's from uh, Dan. He he posted that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh. Well, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Sweet. Well, I feel like this is a, an episode in itself. We should <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So let's get let's get Doug on the phone and uh, and uh, see what Doug's got to say about the shaving conspiracy. All right, let's do it. Well, what's up, Doug? How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thank you guys so much for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. I think we got it figured out this time for yeah. sure. I think we got. I think we got it because we can see the the, the recording bars. Yeah, and they're definitely recording shit. So. <laughs> Watching the audio <laughs> leads. Yeah, dude. So don't go with my emotions, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, we won't. We promise. Hey, dude. Okay. So so we we left uh we left early Sunday morning. Were you still there at uh, UFO Congress all day Sunday? I was. I was there packing. Well, because we were open still. The market was open till one. Yeah. And then after that, we shut down. Um, so I was there till about three. Nice, dude. Nice. So how did Sunday yeah. go? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, Saturday was the best day. Nice. 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 Yeah. Well, that's Sunday what's was. Up. You know, everyone. I mean, it was still a great day, but I mean, it was. It was just a half day, so it was just a different feeling. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. That's what's up, dude. Hey, so I gotta say, uh, my. Uh, I'm starting to stack up on my Phoenix shaving gear, bro. <laughs> like I got, I got some good stuff. I saw now. that on Instagram. I was, I didn't recognize the name at first, and then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, yeah, I got the no, deodorant. It's a now. rabbit hole. You've tumbled down the rabbit hole of Phoenix shaving, my oh, friend. Oh, <laughs> bro, I love it. I love it. But I got, I got to tell you, man. Uh, since I've gotten the stuff. Bro, my old lady won't leave me alone. You know I know. Bro, she's all Well, I don't know that personally, me. but I, I had a suspicion. That's, <laughs> that's, tip, that's typically how it goes because that's the most important person that when it comes to scent and fragrance, they have to like it. Oh, and yeah. So, like as soon it, as I got home, she was like, she, she was like, what is that smell? And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, you smell so good. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh. Nice. Let me tell you about this stuff. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, finally, it's called liquid awesome. Babe. That's exactly yes. what it is. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, dude. I got the soap, and uh, I got some deodorant. I still got my aftershave stuff. I got my 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 beard wax. Damn. I got I got the beard uh, cube. Dude, oh, yeah. I, I'm I'm geared up right now. Hell yeah. Yeah, you geared are. Up. You are. That's awesome. And once once the be- it's time for the beard to go, we have the the safety razor for you too. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dude, I'm I was super surprised on how. Uh, how the soap, dude, it lathers so good, man. Got that lather, dude. Yeah, it's, it yeah. lathers really, really good, man. I, I really it really it. is. It's like, I think it, I personally, and of course I'm going to think this, but I really do think it's the best beard soap or beard shampoo out there. Oh, dude, it's it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe because, like, I can literally, like, drag it across my beard four times and I I, I look like Santa Claus. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's so sudsy. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah. I love and and, and sudsy and super moisturized rising too like after the fact uh-huh. like that's why you don't need conditioner it's, it's shampoo conditioner yeah yeah it, it's pretty awesome i love it yeah i love it, it makes man. that's good what's up, dude so so doug uh tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and just how you you started your company and and how you got in, into all this man oh so we're totally lo- we're we're going with this right now okay, oh yeah we were- <laughs> let's go baby oh yeah we're okay going, I, i'm buddy. really here um I thought I was in the green room. Uh, <laughs> it's always okay. the green room. <laughs> Let's do this again. My name is Douglas Smythe. I'm co-owner and operator of uh, phoenixshaving.com, where we 
deal with all things facial fur and shaving. Um, I consider myself a male grooming software slash hardware developer, uh, meaning that I make artisan shave soaps, aftershaves, and perfumer. Um, I design safety razors. Those are old school traditional razors for those who don't know. Uh, shaving brushes, the whole whole run of the mill. If you, if you deal with meal grooming, I can help you in some way, shape, or form. That's what it all comes down to. I've been doing this since 2012, and uh, we just, we're a fast-growing company. Yeah. So we noticed, uh, so we met you at a UFO Congress and I could not stop coming back to your table because you've got such awesome artwork and it's all alien related or, you know, like monster movie kind of magic kind yes. of things. And I just found that so interesting. Like, uh, have you always, I'm just asking these questions cause you know, I, I've, we've already recorded this, this podcast, but I mean, I'm still curious, like how you got into <laughs> yeah, all this, totally. like, you know what I mean? This one's for the listeners. This one's Doug. for the listeners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not for personal use. <laughs> The other one, yeah, exactly. The other one's for your your ears only, guys. Uh, I'm wearing pants on this one. Um, yeah, I've always been into that retro atomic age uh, type vibe. I grew up, you know, with my head in some comics and uh, creature double feature, the old Godzilla uh, movies back in the day, and so on and forth, so forth. Uh, really into that whole. Well, just that type of universe. And so I, in this business, I managed to incorporate everything I'm, I, I'm into, uh, which doesn't make it feel like a job at all. So, I mean, I created a universe around all these different products. We've even done soap trilogies, uh, like movies where one soap can, uh, goes into the next soap, goes into the next soap. In the label designs, you can find different things hidden, anagrams. Oh, that's stuff, cool. Ooh. Stuff encoded. Kind of like a, like a Beatles album cover is what I was going for, is all yeah. the things you could find that maybe were placed there intentionally or maybe not. Um, characters come and go. The sales pages are less about you know telling you about the product and more about the story around the product or, or just the story in general it goes into like a pseudo sci-fi novella type feel yeah and um some you can really lose yourself on for like i mean one of our sales pages probably take about 45 minutes to get through uh, <laughs> so i mean if you're looking for a quick easy buy i mean i do have the scent notes at the top of the page letting you know what's up but if you want to get a little more involved because i'm all about the way folks interface with our products i want it to be more than just Shaving. I want it to be more than just beard care. I want it to. I want them to experience the same feeling I do when the lights suddenly dim in a theater. That anticipation rising up. You know, like oh, something awesome is about to happen. Like that's what I want people to feel every time they use our product. And yeah, so, dude. Yeah. Yeah, every time when I wake up in the morning, like I get excited. I'm like, ooh, I get to open yeah. this deodorant, you know? Like just looking at the at the 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 imagery and just the like the way it's packaged. It looks cool, you know? The uh I got the doppelganger soap, you know, I like the little box ah, with yes. the, I, I held on to the box. Like how many times yeah. have you ever held on to like your soap box, you know? But it's just such a cool picture that I it's almost like a collectible item. You're bringing soap boxes back, man. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so like every time like I buy a new soap I want to save the box because it's got such a cool picture on it, you know? Uh, thanks, man. Yeah, um, I appreciate that. And a lot of our boxes, especially our starter kits, are made are built to last. In, and that's part of the tradition of traditional wet shaving. Back in the day uh, when Gillette was doing safety razors, real razors, um, along with other companies like Schick and whatnot, they always came in a, a kind of a cool case, too. And um, that's also what, what makes them so collectible today. Yeah. So, so I want to be part of that, you know? So the uh, you mentioned Gillette. Um, uh, so we talked to you a little bit about the uh, the shaving conspiracy. Ah, uh, the cartridge razor conspiracy. <laughs> and I find that so interesting, dude. So we're all yeah. we're all about looking into anything weird or, or things that just people kind of look over and it affects their daily lives. And I, I just think the story is like amazing. Would would, would you mind telling that? Oh sure, sure. Well, a lot of people don't realize it, but well, first of all. Most guys today think they have sensitive skin. Nine out of ten guys, yeah. whenever I speak, I ask them who out there thinks they have sensitive skin, and all the hands, practically all the hands in the room go up, um, and, that, and that's impossible. We can't all just have sensitive skin. What's going on here? What's going on is we, we've been inadvertently for years, for 40 years, giving ourselves sensitive skin by using inferior products, this one-size-fits-all cookie-cutter. Cartridge razors, the multi-blades, those were never, ever invented for your face. They were never invented for a better shape. What they were invented for was for patents. Gillette was losing its patent on the double-edged blade that they invented 50 year, 75 year, 50 years before. This is now 1970-71. They, they were rushing to come up with some type of new patent so they'd be back in the game because right. all, all these other businesses were encroaching on their, their turf. And 
And they did. They released the cartridge race and they went from a multi-million dollar company to a multi-billion dollar company overnight. It's almost like, like that. it's like Nikola Tesla and Edison where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, we need to monetize this. We can't be yeah. just one great product. We have to make a bunch of them and make them disposable so that yeah. people can only use them once and then throw them away and have to buy again. Keep yeah. buying, yeah. And buying, <laughs> obsolescence, and buying. controlled obsolescence. I'm it's, looking. I'm looking at this uh, this razor I found for two hundred dollars. It's by Gillette Labs. It's called the heated razor by Gillette oh. Labs. It's two hundred dollars dollars, and it's got five <laughs> blades on it. <laughs> oh, oh my! Yeah, God. <laughs> yeah. Is that? I mean, that's garbage. Every time you drag one blade across your face you're taking off a layer of skin so with one pass you're taking off multiple up to five layers of skin with that thing. Yeah. and when it comes to their innovations like the vibrating razors or the heated razors those ideas are so old anyone who knows anything about the shaving worlds um realize those those ideas have come up and, and gone away for the last hundred years especially the vibrating razor that's nothing new they were yeah. doing that there's patents for that back in like 1910 so i mean and i my, one of my razors is made out of pure copper if you want a heated shave you just stick that under the faucet the hot water and you get a heated shave Ooh, after that. that. Yeah, that seems like that yeah. would feel good, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah dude. It holds the heat. Yeah. Uh, also, I mean, use a scuttle, too. I mean, you make hot lather with a scuttle, which is like a double-jacketed shaving mug. It has a, an interior part that you fill up with hot water, and then you mix your lather in the top bowl. Yeah. And that keeps the lather hot during the entire shave. And an, an entire shave uh, may consist of, you know, one to four passes and a pass is lathering up with uh, the brush on your face. Yeah. Shaving, rinsing, and repeating. And, uh, and you know, I, I, with car- I, cartridge raises, guys only do typically do one pass. Yeah. <laughs> Thank I, God. I noticed you, uh, I noticed you, uh, you guys have your own scuttle, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We have a few, we have a few scuttles. We Making have a uh, scuttle butt about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have, uh, some ceramic offerings in regards to scuttles. I think we might be the first artisan to put out, I'll put out scuttles as we do. Um, and we also offer an indestructible travel scuttle, too. Yeah, the and travel And for anyone scuttle. who doesn't really know or st- is still have trouble, having trouble grasping with the concept, it's really cool. <laughs> and yeah. once you get into it, you're going to want to take it with you wherever you go. Yeah, what is a scuttle? scuttle? Yeah, dude, I, I don't know. I saw a video that, that you had, uh, and I, I think you may have been been uh, displaying the... Drunk? The, uh, I don't know. You might have been. Drunk. You might have been, but you were just talking about how how uh, just uh, over the years of, of using the the scuttles or whatever, you always thought about what your perfect type of scuttle would be, and uh, it looked really cool. Like the the lines on there, I I didn't oh, yeah. I didn't realize like what that was for, but now it makes sense. It's just for for traction, basically, or yeah, friction, or friction. There to you go. Whips up more lather faster. Uh-huh. Um. Yeah, I mean, okay, th- well, a little history for you. The scuttle goes back probably about 100 and uh, – I could go back about 150 years, if not more. There's always been one sh- shape, uh, shape form <laughs> – one form of sh- uh, shaving scuttle uh, or another. And they were pretty much made for before indoor plumbing or before indoor hot water at least. Whoa. You would heat up – uh, water in you know in a teapot or whatnot, and then pour it into the scuttle. The scuttle was to hold your hot water. It was also hold your shaving soap, and maybe there was a hole or a holder to hold the brush as well. It just kept it all contained. Yeah. So when mom or dad was going around the house putting hot water in uh, the, the cleaning vessels, they'd also fill up dad's shaving mug, and that was a scuttle. The scuttle I have though is a little bit different. It's it's based on that, but what I have is a lather scuttle. Whereas those old scuttles, you would use the hot water in the brush and the soap, you would load up and build the lather on your face. The modern lather scuttle is about building the lather in the bowl. In the bowl, okay, yeah. And it stays there and it keeps it hot because, again, it's double jacketed. There's another vessel below. It's like nesting almost, uh-huh. but it's one piece. Uh, and you fill up the bottom vessel with hot water, and on top is another bowl. And it has verts, as you mentioned, that create friction when you're whipping it up with the brush. But you would load it on the soap puck first, then move it over to the lather scuttle, whip it up, and then apply it to your face. Then put the brush back and shave. And then when you go to do your next pass with the lather, it's hot again. or It's, it's still hot. So it's a consistent hot or warm shave which is awesome and once you yeah. do that there's no going back and that's why you know and you see all these guys with beards myself and you included a lot of the times though this it's this is an expression of just all the bad shaves that we've gotten from cartridge raisers. most men <laughs> yeah absolutely. Hate, they hate shaving they yeah. hate shaving because we've been doing it wrong no one ever taught us the right way yeah we've been sold a bill of goods and that's that's pretty much what my argument's all about is it was never about a better shape. And there's so many things we grew up with around us that are like that. We don't know the real reasons why they're there or if there's a better way. Oh, absolutely. Way. So this is just another like 
eye-opening thing for me anyways and i think for most people and that's why we do stuff like uh, ufo congress because p- the crowd is, is ready for that kind of stuff you know we're trying to introduce more and more people to this concept that there is a better shave out there uh as silly as that seems it's it's i mean once you do it otherwise you're just hurting yourself oh absolutely hey dude yeah. i i heard you had a, a civil war era scuttle is that true? That is true. How did you hear that? Dude, I, I, hey, I've been doing my <laughs> he's research, got, He's brother. got his sources, bro. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing my research, man. <laughs> I respect that. Okay, right on. Yeah, I do. I have a Civil War scuttle. Uh, That's And that, cool. again, is it's it's not like a lather scuttle. It's uh, the original scuttle I was talking about. It's a little bit different, though, but it does have a side packet to hold the soap. And, I mean, this could have been used to drink out of also. You know, every soldier had one of these. And it was multi-purpose, uh-huh. but it was primarily used for field shaving, for shaving in the field. Yeah, yeah, maybe make some coffee in or something too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, coffee yeah. or tea. I mean, they would definitely use it's, it's a pretty cool piece of history though. And there's actually um, reproductions. I, I'm trying to think where it is. One, I did a sh- uh, we have a show called I'd Lather Be Shaving yeah. on YouTube. If you go to idlatherbeshaving.com, it'll take you right to it. And one of the episodes of that, I talk about that and of uh, the scuttle, the Civil War era scuttle, and I give a link below in the description to a reproduction company that also makes them now. So if anyone's interested in that, or maybe just reenactments, this is something they might want to have on them to be period correct. Uh, also, it's just really cool, like visually in the man cave. Oh yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah. I bet that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So, yeah. so I know you're a, you're a, you're a collector of of oddities. It seemed like. <laughs> do you, so do you do you collect like things like that? Do you collect scuttles and and like you know mustache cups and things like that. And, oh yeah. yeah, all of that. Uh, scuttles, mustache, mostly safety razors though. I have uh, hundreds of traditional safety razors from all around the world. Some really awesome designs. And that's another thing. You know, I mean, when you find these things nowadays, uh, they're very expensive. And uh, they still shave as good as they do today, or as they did then, yeah. today. Um, but, and that's another thing my company tries to do is re, you know, reboot some of these classic old designs that ne- really never get a chance. Um, and is that a dog? Yeah, sorry, my dog's <laughs> going crazy. I'm gonna go check on her real quick. Yeah, yeah dude. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, th- yeah, man. I, I, uh, I've been, I've been, I've been looking at some of your videos, and and dude, I, I gotta say, like. I, I've never wanted to shave my beard more than than I, yeah. I do now. It's it's been like, oh man, I've had this thing yeah. for years, bro, and like I never saw myself shaving it. But the more and more I look at your videos, the more and more like tempted I get to just be like, yeah. I'm gonna shave this son of a bitch right now. I like, know I kill I kill beards, man. I'm a beard slayer. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> but the good thing for me is that I can grow back pretty quick. But yeah, I was I was yeah. I was telling my wife, I was like, you know what, I I, I'm, I need to be, you know. I'm going to get one of these razors and I'm going to start being at least a neck shaver, you know? Yes. I need to at least do that and try it out because like you were saying, man, yeah, it's, it's, it is almost an expression of, of just multiple terrible shaves and just being uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I really think it is. And it was interesting because I saw Gillette put out a study a few years back and they were talking just about that. They were talking about how the beard fad, they've lost so much, you know, market share. They've lost, lost so much, um, in regards to the beard craze, uh-huh. uh, the sales were going down. They were blaming it all on beards, beards, beards. They never once mentioned the return to traditional shaving, uh-huh. and they know that's going on. Oh yeah, they they are owned. They own Art of Shaving also in the malls, so they own both horses. But the thing is, if they brought that up in their study, suddenly it would draw attention to that, and people would be going, "Oh, if they say it's just a beard fad." People know that that's going to go away. Right. What they don't realize is another way of shaving. And for those that do, you have art of shaving in the mall, which, you know, love them or hate them, they're, they're still doing a good thing because they're creating, they're aiding and creating an awareness around alternate forms of shaving, you know, alternative ways of shaving yeah. that we didn't know of until then. So there's that. But I just thought that was interesting. Like, oh, Gillette kept their mouth shut there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, for sure. Dude, another interesting thing that you said that I, I – it kind of blew my mind was was that uh, your the hair absorbs the water like when you were talking about not chasing the shave like, oh the uh, baby butt smooth shave a BBS yeah. shave yeah. yeah dude well uh, that's the that's the kiss of death right there is most of us while we're shaving we we're you know we we shave once and we feel like oh do I need to touch up and we go back at it and that again kiss of death because it's an illusion when you're shaving and you're using lather. That's, that's used to pull in the moisture and the hydration, rather, into the whisker. It wants that water. It makes it fatter. It blows up about 80%. Um, so it's more for the rays to bump 
to bite onto. Yeah. That's why they do hot towel treatments back in the day. Uh, or that's why we recommend you do it, take a shower first or even shave in the shower. Conditions are perfect there. But your hair is sucking up that water. Like you have a beard. You know yeah. how much be- you know how much beer and alcohol that thing can contain. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, like Quite it's a, a beard. It's a beard tank. So that's what it's doing. <laughs> it's absorbing all that. And uh, so often we'll, we'll chase that perfect shave and we end up doing more harm than good with razor, causing razor burn, bumps, ingrown hair, so on and so forth, where we should just stop. Right. When we right. think when you think it's close enough, if, even if it feels like it's still there, stop because within a half an hour it's going to drop back down and it's going to be a damn fine shave. Nice, oh. nice. Yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah, that's 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 pretty awesome, man. I just had this vision of Ben going over to a dog and twisting its head. <laughs> <laughs> that might be what happened. I have no oh, idea. Yeah, what just yeah. Very quiet now. Yeah. There's no way to tell. <laughs> you yeah. shut your goddamn mouth yeah. right now. You can just hear heavy breathing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's all, back. All sweaty. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, so I have these like two dinosaur sized bones, and I just gave both of my dogs them, so they're very happy now. They, oh, nice, nice. <laughs> they, felt yeah. ne- they felt left out, and they're all. Yeah, they just wanted a little, literally, touch, a little love. They were literally right around on the other side of the door, just like, I want to be a part of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm wearing headphones, so I didn't know if, and I'm at my uh, facility, and I didn't know if it was outside my door or if it was inside here, so I was like, <laughs> trying to yeah. talk to you guys, and I'm yeah. thinking, like, I have to go outside and deal with something. <laughs> I, I heard you kind of pause for a second. I was like, oh, no, he hears it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Well, welcome back. Welcome yeah. back to the conversation. Thanks, buddy. man. Sorry about <laughs> that. Dude, Sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it happens. Uh, bro, so uh, I saw you did like a little uh, live post the other day, and uh, you made a reference to uh, uh, Mikasa. <laughs> And and mi it casa. was an E T in Spanish. Telefono, telefono yeah, mi casa. Telefono mi casa. <laughs> Bro, that reference literally made me go watch E T in Spanish and it was hilarious. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? <laughs> yes, man. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, if, if none of y'all out there have ever seen E T in Spanish, it's yes. definitely worth a watch. If you oh, gotta yeah. turn the it's subtitles a- on, do that. But I mean it's a classic. So you shouldn't even need the subtitles. <laughs> oh no, no, no. I, it's it's it is a classic and you've hopefully seen it more than once oh yeah but uh yeah no any if anyone who grew up uh speaking spanish they'll know exactly what you're talking about if they're our age or whatnot they'll know exactly what you talk about because yes, <laughs> yes. even his voice he sounded like he's <laughs> like this little old man like oh, telephone telephone mi casa. Mi casa. <laughs> yeah dude so it was, it's funny because you know i, I kind of do i uh, i work in the landscaping business and uh i was telling some guys at work i was like yo so i watched et in spanish <laughs> and that was hilarious and they all kind of looked at me like why was that funny like you know, because <laughs> they all mainly speak Spanish. They were like, I don't get it. So I had to wait and come and tell Ben because I know he'd never seen it in Spanish and had to show me a YouTube I was clip. Dude. Cracking up, it was yeah, so funny. it was hilarious, bro. Like when you said that, uh, when you were like, you were like, nobody's gonna get this reference, and you were like, Mi casa. I was like, this sounds like some ET in Spanish. And then you were like, Yeah, it's ET in Spanish. Oh, holy yeah. shit. So, oh, did you really? I didn't think you caught. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, if you caught yeah. it that fast, that's good, man. Yeah, I was like, dude, this sounds like something E.T. would say in Spanish. <laughs> I think it's just the way my brain works, though. Like, it just went directly there. And yeah. I was like, oh, oh good, sh-. good. Yeah. Uh, You're gonna so, love my live videos. That my I, I do I try to do a live video in my car like every day on the way to the gym. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah, that's what's up, dude. Yeah, so yeah. so yeah, that influenced me to go and watch ET in Spanish. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was great, uh, dude. Thank you, thank you. As long as I can reach one person, <laughs> hey, dude, I'm doing what, my job. That's what makes it worth it. We feel the same way. As long as we can reach one person, exactly. we're doing our jobs. Exactly. Yeah, man. And you guys cool. are doing a service. Very cool. cool hilarious yeah uh, speak, so, speaking of et i, I mean I, I i feel like you have to tell us your your ufo maybe you know unidentified kind of experience uh just so the listeners know how awesome story that is <laughs> if, if you if you want to tell it wait did we t- do this before uh yeah but you know we didn't press record so we, <laughs> uh, yeah. i'd love for you to tell our listeners about okay, it okay yeah 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 i forgot i can't remember what we spoke about last time but okay yeah um because we were at UFO Congress, um, the guys were asking me if I ever had an experience myself. And I, I had a few – I had a couple questionable experiences that I – my mind just doesn't automatically go to, to aliens or UFOs first, um, even though that would be awesome and break the monotony of everyday life. Uh, I, it, it just doesn't go there first. I try to figure out – as I think most sensible people do, 
uh, yeah. you know, figure out what, well, what could that have been? You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't go there. I'm not Giorgio, so my mind is not going <laughs> aliens first. Aliens. Um, Therefore, and, aliens. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I love that. I wish, I wish everything was that easy to simplify. <laughs> but uh, I was living in Central America. I lived in Central America for uh, four years. And while I was down there, I had two experiences. I actually had a couple, ex- a couple more than that, but... Two big ones were I was just hanging outside on a patio one time, uh, drinking, alcohol was involved, um, with some friends. But, you know, you don't hallucinate on alcohol, and that's right. why I, you know, and you know that. Yeah. But some people don't know that. You, know, you hear some stories, and they always discredit people like, well, he was drinking. It's I like, know. yeah, I've had a lot that's... to drink. I'll black out before I hallucinate on exactly. drinking. Exactly. Yeah. But I was on the patio, and out of the sh- corner of my eye, left eye, that something shot out before me into the night sky. And it it seemed to have an intelligence to it, the way it moved around and just shot off into nothing. And I and I was in the middle of a conversation, kind of like now. I was talking about something, and I just stopped from where I was sitting and stood up and stared off. And everyone's looking at me like, "What is going on here?" Yeah. And uh, I wasn't drunk. I probably had maybe one or two beers in me, and Costa Rican beer. So hey, it's, there it's you never go. No, yeah, it wasn't really that. <laughs> it's more like drinking my own urine, but uh, <laughs> in flavor and in performance. But uh, <laughs> and so I. I you know, immediately was just trying to figure out, like, in that moment, what just, what did I just witness? What happened? Because my, my mind wasn't there. My mind was in the conversation, but this happened at the same time. Like, it overlaid on top of it. And I, to this day, it could have been a firefly. Fireflies are down there and whatnot. There weren't any around to, for me to make sense of that. But right. I could see a firefly mm-hmm. doing the same thing. Like, I mean, it looking the same way. Yeah, definitely. And Costa Rican fireflies are huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got some big old yeah. booties. Well, I don't know. Booties. Te- Everything's bigger in Texas, though, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a big bootyful firefly. Maybe. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it So we're just going to say it's a UFO because that's <laughs> that was what it was in its truest form. And another time before that, I was uh, on the beach at a fire again. Uh, partying with some friends i had a couple beers in me and i was but i've never had an experience like this drinking i was i left the fire we we, i lived in the rainforest kind of at the edge of the rainforest on a beach and in a hammock uh Uh, yeah that's the best part is that you live in a hammock (laughs) yeah that's that's that was my house my casa uh i did have a tent but (laughs) i used the tent for supplies but I, i i slept and lived pretty much in my hammock but that's just some background anyways i was on the beach and I left the fire to go use the bathroom, which would be the jungle, the, the rainforest right there. And I wasn't too deep in. I was probably about a few feet into the forest. And this is probably like midnight, the witching hour, or somewhere around there, you know. And I was doing my thing. And something was running at me full force. I could hear it. I could, I could hear it. I could almost feel it, too, coming at me. And then it stopped immediately and abruptly, probably a yard in front of me. And there was nothing there. And I'm just like leaning up against the tree. I don't, maybe I was leaning against the tree. I was just, you know, kind of taking that all in, maybe rocking a little, like, what was that? Yeah. And I just kind of shrugged it off and walked away. But I, it, but I was, you know, in shrugging it off, I was like, it was a lizard. It must have been a lizard, an iguana. Iguanas were all over there. It must have been under, you know, the, the foliage running at me and then saw me and stopped. Yeah. Because those things are, they're big and they will make noise. But this is at night and I don't know right. if lizards are nocturnal or not. I should probably find that out. Yeah. That's, I don't think they are. That's what was interesting because it was at night and like, I mean, I, I don't know, are, are do they have feral hogs out there, wild hogs or... Maybe. Uh, uh, oh, that's interesting. I, I don't know. Like, Maybe it was like the, the those tiny little dinosaurs on Jurassic Park. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Rapt- little... Raptors. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> well, you, no, where I was living, actually, Jurassic Park was filmed in part of where I was li- in that in that area. Oh, yeah, sweet. yeah, yeah. It was. Oddly enough, so was uh, Anaconda. Oh, that gives you an idea cool. where dude, I was living. Cool. Anaconda it, is such a good <clears throat> yeah. flick. Dude. Well, there was another or? time uh, I was actually in my hammock. And I, I, I would pick up my hammock and take it down the beach to other parts of the jungle to sleep in overnight sometimes just to get out and do stuff. And I was doing that. It, it functioned as my tent, too. I didn't have a, a cover for it, but I would tie a string above it and hang like a, a silk or a satin type sheet. It was some type of sheet I bought in the Salvation Army down there over it just to prevent almonds from falling on me because I was, it was always almonds tree, almond trees. I, was, <laughs> I, right. I, don't, I don't know. And squirrels and monkeys would chuck That's... those things at you. But, uh, <laughs> but something came up to me in the night. And this time I knew what it was. It was a panther. It was some type of large cat. Oh, it, was no. a lot, and it just stood there. Dude. I don't know if it was going to run through me and then stop, start, but it checked me out. 
And like I didn't move. Oh. I just let it check me out, and then it went went away and did its thing. But it was a large cat. That much I know. Oh my so, I mean, god! It is the jungle. There are lots of living things there. There's lots yeah. of wild stuff going on, and there's things that, as me, the gringo, that I'm not used to. I didn't grow up in that environment. I don't right. know it well. So rather than me jump to the paranormal immediately. I can, you know, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I, that's like I say is I just don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's a responsible thing to do. I mean, it's fun. I mean, that's what the podcast is about. We're talking about, like, experiences and stuff. But it's always good to be a little skeptical. And, all right, here yeah. are all the options. Here's the facts. Man, wouldn't it be yeah. cool if it was some something out of this world? But, all right, let's be real and, and, and talk about it. I mean, it's, exactly. it's, but that's what makes it fun is, like, man. It, it, maybe it was uh, some, you know. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But and yeah, that's and that's and, and for me, that's enough. But you know, <laughs> <I don't>. but, <laughs> you know, the Panther probably went back to his, uh, you know, his pride or maybe his his mate and said, "Hey, baby, I I saw." A UFO <laughs> in, the, yeah, in the jungle. Exactly, yeah. It looked like uh, I don't know. It just it, it looked like a cloud, but it was hanging out in yeah, the tree. Yeah. You know, it had this like monkey in it, but it was like really, really white and hairless. You know, yeah. I think it was. I think it was the the hairless monkey I almost ran into the other time. <laughs> yeah, that was urinating in the woods. Exactly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> from the yeah. previous experience. Yeah, oh, but dude. I should probably I should probably give you guys some backstory about why I was in Central America. Um, Absolutely. That's pretty much that's where the business started. I, I, I get I did you an injustice my for my introduction. Um, Phoenix Shaving originally began in Central America. I, I moved down there um, to, to Costa Rica to Montezuma, Costa Rica. It's on the Coya Peninsula without knowing anybody or the language um, about ten years ago, and it was awesome. Not knowing the language. And just, I mean, well, you just end up in these cool situations. They're almost like beautiful dreams where you don't know where you're going, but it always ends up being pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot like being a lyric in a Paul Simon or a Jimmy Buffett song, maybe. <laughs> Hell and yeah. uh, That's cool. I was just li- living on my savings and surfing and uh, studying uh, playing Pandero, uh, which is kind of like a tambourine, Brazilian tambourine. Long story. I was also teaching a children's orchestra down there. But the thing is, um, I was getting bit by sand fleas in between the hours of like 5 and 6 p.m. every night. And there was nothing to treat it with. And, you know, in the United States, we have Afterbite. And uh, I've always been a huge fan of that. It works immediately, you know. Yeah. So couldn't find anything like that down there. So I ended up inventing my own product, uh, buying some, you know, raw materials from different markets down there and putting together my own product. I was calling It's No Mas. And it was, I just, I, I made it because I needed it. It was never an, an intended to sell or anything like that. And the thing is, it worked really well, so much so that other tourists and even locals were knocking on my tent flaps trying to get some. And uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, if I ever make it back to the United States, I'm going to sell this stuff. I'm going to ship it down here and sell it. And that's exactly what happened. Four years later, I was back in the United States sent, uh, making and shipping down Itch No Mas. And with that, I created another product called Stink No Mas. Which was an emergency yeah. insect, an re- emergency deodorant slash insect repellent. That's so awesome. as you wore it, you would sweat, and it would release essential oils into the air that would repel certain bugs and, or noceums. And that actually did, ended up doing much better than the, the Itch No Moss. Itch No Moss did great, but Stink No Moss was like a huge hit. Um, I need, I need that, some of that Itch No Moss right now. I mean, like, <laughs> it's yeah. about to rain. Mosquitoes are coming back in Texas. Oh. I'm gonna I actually, that, I don't yeah. make it anymore. I actually don't. The, people up here don't. There's so many products up here that you use. Uh, that you can use that I just well, don't see the desire I, I, for. I would like to commission you to to build or to make some more just for like a UFO garage. Like, like Yeah, <laughs> I actually have some in my garage, ironically hey, enough. I have a box of, awesome. of, of back stock that's probably about seven years old now, but I will gladly send you one, Joe. Um or Ben, Dude. all you white guys sound the same. <laughs> we do kind of sound the same. Hey, so, so me and Ben, me and Ben were were wanting to pitch something to you, UFO garage wise. We were thinking, you know, maybe maybe like you could make a product that like you know, f- f- like for your balls. Or <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, like a ball butter. Dude, like ball a, butter, like a, like, like a pH balancer uh, for your balls. To, okay, so you know how people like get chafing down there. You know, when you're at Six Flags or something, or it's a hot day. You know, to have yep. some, to have some, some, uh, 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 s- some slippage, some dude. slippage. Dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. Well, I did make something called snowballs, Ooh. and it was a, uh, it was mentholated powder. <laughs> and that was in my my hometown is where uh, Gold Bond powder was invented. Oh, really? FYI, oh, so wow. I make a mean powder just by de- <laughs> by default. I think it was in the drinking water. Yes. But yeah, snowballs. We did make that probably about five years ago. On our see, the original company name was How to Grow a Mustache. Because uh, we had a blog, howtogrowmustache.com, which is still out there, but it's kind of defunct. 
But uh-huh. I was making products around that. And so one was the How to Grow Mustache Snowball Powder or Snowballs Powder. And that was just that. I mean, it was for chafing and all that other jazz and, you know, prickliness. But the menthol was over the top. So it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> woo! Like, that's a, like I, put an Icy Hot on your, your uh, Yes. Your boys. It was a lot like that. Like you, <laughs> the you, thing is, you rub they your calves it. and you People... scratch your nuts and forget that you had Icy Hot on your hands. Dude. Dude. Oh, my God. That's happened to me before. Dude, the other day, so my company my company has a poopery in the toilets. Uh-huh. And I forgot to spray it before I sat down to take a deuce deuce. And I sprayed it on my, my downstairs. <laughs> And yo, don't ever do that because it stings so Does it? bad. Never spray. You know who? Oh. Uh, Doug, do you know what poopery is? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like a ginger. Yeah. It's like an oil based yeah. stuff product yeah, that you put you're on supposed, top of the- You're supposed to like spray it into your the toilet water before you go to the bathroom. That's uh, the guy, the guy, the Dollar Shave Club guy, right? That's uh, his- maybe. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't look like they're branding, but it's called poopery. Yeah, and it's like I remember this that. Really pungent ginger uh, <laughs> smelling stuff. And dude, I sprayed it on. It was the worst pain oh, I've ever yeah, felt. I can imagine. And there was a meeting going on right next door, and I was like, <laughs> ah, <laughs> dude. And they look at each other like poopery. <laughs> <laughs> you, would, you would think it's like. Yeah, it's ginger like- is no joke. I mean, that stuff. I, I don't even use that in products if I don't have to because uh, it'll burn you. It'll burn yeah. your skin. Yeah. That, it's clove oil, those are some uh, some intense sp- – any spice, any sp- spicy oil is going to burn your skin. So oh, I don't uh, – man, I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. I'm sorry you had to experience that, my friend. <laughs> so do you, you think it's the – you're saying it's the ginger that actually like – Oh, yeah. Burn? Okay. So all right. There that makes go. sense. Now there you go. Now you got your answer. Yeah. It's funny, dude, That's because – Cause it's like instead of like you walking in, and you're like, oh, somebody pooped in here. Then you like spray the poopery, and you walk in, and you're still like, oh, yeah, somebody pooped shit in here. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they should keep changing the scent so you just never know what's going yeah. on. If they yeah. get a cologne scent, dude. Yeah, something, yeah. something. But no, ginger, clove, uh, black pepper. Those those are certain uh, scent notes to be wary of when you're looking for an aftershave. Or something you're gonna, or a, a bomb, or something you're gonna put on freshly shaven skin, yeah. because those will those will burn you. They'll turn your skin red. That's why clove oil is used for to treat, you know, homeopathically or uh, to, uh, home treatments, gums. If you have a toothache or whatnot, people rub, rub oh, clove yeah. oil on it. Yeah, yeah. So imagine that in an aftershave. Ooh, yeah, yeah, exactly. dude. Oh, dude. Uh, so you were saying that aftershave was originally invented as an antiseptic, right? Yeah, that's the that's what it, that's what it was made for. That's that's the first priority is being an antiseptic. Scent was purely an afterthought in regards to aftershave. Um, in fact, back in the day, shaving soaps and aftershaves had two different scents most of the time. They just didn't. They didn't. People didn't pair them like they do nowadays. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, people were dying. People were leaving the barbershop and dying. Dang. Not immediately, but they Dude. were getting abs- abscesses and whatnot, <clears throat> just from little nicks, micro cuts, and nicks. They would become infected and they would die. Uh, Henry David Thoreau's brother actually uh, died of that, and that's what led him to leave and uh, write Walden Ponds or write Walden. Wow! Um, it's right after his brother's death from that. So yeah, that's why inve- aftershave was invented. However, it, it was reinvented because the Romans actually had various forms of aftershave too. Oh uh, really? Oh yeah, and some of their ingredients are really like of the time, like spider web. <laughs> 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 that was in there too. I've always yes. wanted to write a book on the history of aftershaves, but <laughs> aftershaves are really fascinating. But yeah, it was really just, and still to this day, it's an antiseptic. After you're done shaving, you want to close up everything. You want to make sure there's nothing growing on there or ah. giving it the opportunity to grow on there. So yeah, you want to use antiseptic. And uh, and then, you know, in the early 30s, 20s, they, they started adding fragrance to it early on. But again, it wasn't really the, the, the prime objective here. It was right. just an afterthought. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that kind of blew my mind. I was yeah. like, whoa, really? People were just dying and then they came up, that's how you came up with aftershave? Yeah, that's, they, that's they, cool. they finally got it. So, and, you know, another, Listerine started off as an aftershave, if that tells you anything. Oh, yeah. no, yeah. no wonder it tastes people like were aftershave. That, <laughs> people were slapping that on. Uh, Aqua Velva is another one. Aqua Velva started off as an aftershave. I mean, uh-huh. as a, a mouthwash. And then they turn into an aftershave. Oh wow, that's crazy! And a lot of GIs during the Second World War were getting drunk off the stuff in, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, over and abroad. Uh, so they had to, they started adding uh, chemicals to it, to, so that you couldn't drink it anymore. It was oh, perfumers damn. alcohol. Yeah, and they also started coloring it blue. But yeah, 
Little... Dude, so I, I can't remember where I heard this. This this might have, uh, have been on a, a podcast that I've listened to before, but the origins of the, uh, you know, the colors from the barbershops, the red, white, and blue. The, yes. the red was meant to sign, uh, signify that they, that the whatever shop had, uh, you know, participated in bloodletting or, or, or something mm-hmm. like that. Do you know more about that? Yeah. Uh, in fact, the original colors are just red and white. If you go to okay. Europe, their barber poles are red and white. And what that signifies, yeah, it was, it was bloodletting. What they would do is back in the day after bloodletting, they would have all these bloody rags and they would have to wash them all by hand and then dry them out on like a, you know, like a, a fence in front of the shop. Yeah. And so you'd have all these white rags blowing in the wind with blood stains on it too. And it just looked like Whoa. the pole. When you see that pole, you know, <laughs> white, bl- yeah. clean, clean, yeah, bloody rags blowing in the wind. Oh. Uh, then you get to the United States and they added the blue color to it. And I think that was more... Uh, patriotic in that oh, okay. way. yeah just to differentiate yeah America. i was thinking it might be the blue from the blue dye that they added to the aftershave i don't know oh, oh, yeah. I, I like i like how you're thinking but no no <laughs> this is before that i well it might have happened around the same time but i think it's more like a red white and blue america was just making it or united states was just making it their own oh, that's pretty Dang, crazy that's cool yeah watch your video yeah. on why some aftershaves cost more than others oh. and, and kind of watch that whole process dude there's a lot that goes into that man that was a response video from probably about like three years ago because I had some people saying, you know, your aftershave is too expensive. My aftershave costs about $25. However, it's not aftershave. It's aftershave cologne. Right. It, it, both words are on the label, but people only think aftershave. And the thing is, it's not. It's more than aftershave. We're, in fact, we're using old school perfuming methods to make it. So uh-huh. they take anywhere between four to six weeks, sometimes up to a year to make wow. like a fine wine or an alcohol. Wow. Uh, people don't realize that because there are people on the market or there are artisans or there are – companies that make aftershave but they don't they don't they don't make perfume they make aftershave they uh-huh. just slap alcohol and fragrance together bottle up boom it's good to go yeah uh now what we do is, is is an art and i don't mean to sound pretentious with that but it is it's it's yeah no artist. absolutely uh, yeah joe we, you were telling, telling me about uh a video you were watching of, of doug uh, and, and them doing a uh, something with rose petals and a, and a beaker and, and yeah a, yeah yeah it was yeah. it was it looked pretty like i mean not labor intensive but definitely a lot of time it took a lot of time to make that it yeah like. yeah you're not yeah. just yeah. buying like fragrances off of amazon and just putting them in a bottle right i mean you, it seems like you're just you're really putting the time and effort to really be an artist oh, making yeah. these things yeah this is high quality yeah. shit we're talking about here yeah. people <laughs> I mean, this is good good stuff dude yeah we saw we we have we really put our time and energy into sourcing uh raw materials and biomass and we also distill a lot of our own essential oils or, or distill hydrosols uh used in the aftershave colognes but the thing is yeah so with our aftershaves it's the same like face saving ingredients as a traditional aftershave but the all-day staying power of a cologne so that's what differentiates us from a lot of the other stuff out there. Because traditionally, aftershave, the scent is fleeting. It lasts about an hour. That, that way guys could you know, add whatever cologne they wanted to on top of it and not have to worry about it clashing during the course of the day. Yeah. Uh, you, you know what I think about is like I think the, the, most, like, the best compliment I've ever gotten was, you smell good. <laughs> you know yeah have you, have you ever gotten that compliment don't, don't yeah. you feel just like you, all right it, it makes your day oh it's so it's such a good feeling like man, yeah. you, sm- like, you smell good like what yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's true you know i was always known for for that for smelling i was a bay rum guy and um yeah. people would know i was on the scene before they even saw me because they could smell me before i came around the corner like <laughs> oh, just like coming. yeah yeah, they knew it. I mean, like, it's really fun. Like, that was, like, my signature scent in sandalwood, like, during college. The sandalwood would rub into my beard. I just get these nice. such oils. Yeah. And I would just rub it. This is before beard oils were all the rave. And um, and so it was, like, this combination of bay rum and sandalwood I would always rock. Before that, though, I grew up Old Spice. Old Spice. <laughs> I remember being in high school. That was, like, my first <laughs> fragrance. Because that's what I could afford back then. Yeah, and, dude. And uh, I'd have – I remember a girl, like, vividly, I remember this. She turned around. She's like, you smell great. You smell <laughs> yeah. just like my – you smell just like my dad. <laughs> and like, so that was kind of creepy, but yeah. you know, I mean, I'll oh, take God. it. Yeah, dude, the, the I, sense that you guys use, man, like even after a shower, it still like lingers, like in a good way. It's yeah, it, it smells really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my, we take care of you. Yeah, my my uh my wife loves you guys, and you know. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's I like. Well, you know what? They, they, she does now. But once you start down that rabbit hole, she's not going to like me too much. I get oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. My, my vanity is like filling up with stuff. Yes. And she's like, and she's like, you bought something else? And I'm like, yeah. Also, I thought it was pretty impressive was uh, it shipped uh, quite well because I got soap and a deodorant. And, you know, 
I'm sure it's it's hot in Phoenix and it's mm-hmm. hot as shit here in Texas and it sat in my metal uh, mailbox for a couple hours and and none of it melted. So I was yes. pretty, I was pretty pleased with that. So yeah, we we well thankfully we're in Arizona, so we can test all that out before even before we even put it on the market. Yeah, that's important. But that, you know, it's funny you bring that up because I did a tutorial many years back on my uh, channel, DouglasMythChannel dot com. For anyone who's interested, but uh, how to make actually, you know what? It might have been on the blog. But how to make a, a mailbox cooler? So if you were expecting certain soaps in the mail, you could. I would teach you how to convert your mailbox into a cooler. Ah, <laughs> to like ice in, pack it all. It? Oh, okay. I insulated it with foam, and I had ice packs in there. So if you knew, if you were watching the track and knew when your stuff was going to be there, if you had to go to work yeah. or whatever, you would have it all prepped. And I even had a thermometer in there. I was keeping it down temp. And uh, and this was in Arizona. I'm in the desert. Yeah, and totally. it was working. It was amazing. Like I had it down. I think I had it. 40 or 50 degrees. Damn. Uh, Damn for, dude, you put for, your beer in there, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah Just exactly. leave the mailman a beer. <laughs> exactly. I know. I actually thought about that, leaving him a beer. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Because, because, dude, I, I like rushed home after work. I was driving like a madman to, <laughs> to go check out my soap. <laughs> like, yeah. I was stoked about it, dude. I was so yes. worried it was going to melt, but it didn't. It didn't melt. So yeah. I was pretty excited. I was pretty no, excited. that's great. Yeah, that's, that's that type of feeling. Like, we often joke around about like all of us waiting for the mailman because like this ho- it's a hobby like traditional shaving is a hobby guys don't just stop at one razor and one soap i mean this is a rabbit hole i'm not fooling around when i say that yeah. you'll typically see people like you'll save money if you switch over to safety razors because you, you know in, in theory you will the blades cost pennies you know a hundred of them cost between nine and fifteen dollars where cartridges are like four for 25 bucks yeah but then you have the dollar shave club but i mean but so what if it's an inferior product it's really you're not you're not saving anything. Yeah, then you gotta um, spend all the extra money on taking care of your face after you destroyed it. Yeah, right. With all with all the other add on stuff they sell you, I'm pretty sure. But um, so so that so I kind of laugh when I see like some companies pushing trying to push people over safe raises by saying they'll save money. And you won't because yeah. it's addictive. It's it becomes a new hobby, especially in, when you start collecting the older stuff, the antique razors, the antique bu- the antique brushes. I and mean, now it's like it takes on a whole different life. See, I grew up collecting. I'm uh-huh. a collector. I collect comics, coins, stamps, all that stuff. Antiques. I love that. Now I finally had this antique in my hand that is not only an antique, it's also still functional. Yeah. You still use it. And it, again, it shaves just as good today as it did 75 years ago when it came off the assembly line. Yeah, you get to uh, play with your antique every day. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's hey, awesome. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, so I think it's really neat. If these things could talk to the stories they could tell. I mean, I have stuff from the Second World War that saw the war. I mean, soldiers own these. Their names are on it. You know that's I mean? so cool. Gillette was the official razor of the U.S. Army. Uh-huh. It's the First World War, anyways. And they had all the contracts. So that was great for Gillette because these guys would come home hooked on their products, uh-huh. <laughs> you know. But um, yeah, I just love the history behind it. I love the form and the function. And these are heirloom pieces. That's another thing. So you're not going to pass down a cartridge razor to your kid, but you can pass down a safety razor yeah, and they'll definitely. be using it. Their, their children's children will be using it too. I mean, these things last forever and they shave the best because all you need is one blade at the end of the day. The multi blades are just hurting us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm like feeling, I'm, I'm starting to f- uh, think about things that maybe you would hand down to your kids. And like, as a man, it's like, I mean, at least in Texas and in my life, it's always been like a gun or maybe like a wallet that your grandfather owned or maybe a time yeah. piece for some some people yeah, but like a belt or something but, or a yeah. belt yeah, yeah but like a yeah, razor belt buckle, belt buckle. it's it's such an intimate object it's like something that your grandfather your dad or whatever used on their own face and now you get to use it yep it's such yep. a cool idea man yeah it is, an awesome, it. Idea. It's it is. an awesome idea it's an awesome idea you know yeah. it's another thing in the hobby that a lot of guys do is they, they try to collect their birth year razors and uh they try to find a safety razor from the year they were born huh. and uh you know for, for a lot of us they stopped making safety razors <laughs> in, the, in the 80s. So, so a lot of guys can't find one, you know, but the, guy, the older guys can pick them up. And that's, again, it's just part of the hobby. The hobby is just you're picking what you're going to collect. Are you going to collect vintage Gillettes or vintage European razors or shaving brushes mm-hmm. or shaving soaps? I collect vintage aftershaves. I can talk about vintage aftershave all day long. That's cool. Uh, I find them absolutely fascinating. Um, just the, the history. I mean, and thank the Lord that wet shaving – had this revival that coincided with the internet because before like the early 2000s it was tough to find blades and right? no one was really talking about the stuff it's now we have access to all of it again because the rest of the world uh kept using double-edged blades they didn't jump into the cartridge cartridges like we did right, so there's right. still still hundreds of companies out there doing it but 
the amount of stuff, history in regards to wet shaving that is gone and has disappeared is huge. So there's like, when I find, like I have one bottle of aftershave from Gillette called Spruce Gillette Aftershave. You will not find this out there. Oh, man. I might have the only one bottle in existence. There's probably a few actually, but it's extremely rare. The company has no record of it in their archive. Damn, I, that's yeah, cool. I, uh, we have a sh- so with our show, we often reach out to different archivists of different companies, and, and Gillette is one of them. And I was asking about this; he has no record of it. Wow. Um, from what I understand, when I put together my own, I think it was a British release. I think it was one holiday season. Uh, but so, so this scent should be in a museum. Yeah, and dude. What I try to do is I try to recreate a lot of these old scents, reboot them. Is what I call it. Same thing with yeah. razors companies that disappeared i tried to reboot the designs or reboot the sense because it's a piece of history that is gone otherwise and had i not been involved in this hobby and decided to hold on to this as an archivist in my own right it'd be gone yeah so, it, so it, many things are disappearing you know and like and somebody who doesn't know any better would just be like oh look at this old thing and they would may throw it in the trash right yeah. right yeah 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 it would be gone dude, dude yeah that's that, a, that yeah that's crazy it's, that, that it's makes part me, of our history that makes me think of uh so my mom uh, she has this bottle of Vicks Vapor Rub. It's this mentholatum kind of oil cream that you you oh yeah yeah I know, I put know put experience. on your chest when you're sick to make you yeah breathe a little it's like better. Vaseline. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so she has this same bottle from 1987, I think, is the year, <laughs> and she still has it in there. Still <laughs> stuff left in it, dude. I laughed. Yeah, so I, we were mo- I was moving her to a new house, and I was like, Mom, uh, yeah. you used that on me when I was a kid. Like that's insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be in a museum. Oh, yeah, yeah, this has to be in a museum. <laughs> I know, and I think that's one of the great things about the stuff that goes to die in our bathroom. Like, <laughs> you get, Dad used to get out the shave for Christmas. He'll never use it. You get it from the kids, but he can't throw it out, so it stays in the drawer yeah. or it stays well, in the cabinet, and, and it'll be good. there. It can be. Yeah. Sometimes that temperature sense it fluctuates in the bathroom okay. up and down. It depends on how big the family is, how many hot showers a day happen. Mm. It can have an, an adverse reaction on these products but but oftentimes too they 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 manage to survive um uh, especially if they never use the products they don't open it they've no, never ex- seen any air inside the bottle that's the bottle you want to buy ah, okay. when i'm shopping around for vintage aftershaves online or at antique shops if it's half full or there's a lot missing i won't unless it's a really cool bottle i won't spring for it because chances are it's gone yeah wow that makes the sense. scent is gone yeah Damn. or if it was stored like if it's stored in the window, you know, on the windowsill, now it's getting hit by the sun every day. The UVs oh, yeah. uh, rays will really affect it too. So it's like it has to make its way just right through time in order for me to add it to my collection. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's just it's a really fun hobby. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, dude. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So out of the out of the stuff that that you make, what is your favorite? I guess Bay Rum, or or well, do you, do you yeah. have kind of like a, a new kind of favorite that that you you've kind of moved over to? I, I you know we have almost 70 cents now and yeah. i don't do anything unless i really want to uh the doppelganger collection is kind of a new thing for us because those are plays on classic scents. Uh-huh. those are like homages that i typically wouldn't gravitate to yeah. but our our uh, customers have for years they always ask me hey can you you know can you reboot this and my whole thing is well i don't i only like to reboot stuff that doesn't exist anymore i don't right. want to like step on anyone's toes but i was eventually getting so many of these emails i was like you know what screw it I'm going to do that. And people want it. I want to make them happy. I don't want to resist my customers. Yeah. Um, so I got the doppelganger, started- uh, the black label, and I love it, dude. Yes, that's based on Sauvage. Uh huh. Because so I have that. Of- I have the beard stuff, the Sauvage beard, uh, beard yes. cream. And it, it, dude, it, it's awesome. I love it. Yes. So that's an, a, a, it's a very popular scent, obviously, uh, Chris, Christian Dewar. But, um, I never thought I'd ever be doing it. And so, yeah, I just jumped to doing that and it's been a huge, that's hence the doppelganger name. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> uh, and you know, so we had a lot of fun with that in advertising as well. Is it, but, uh, is it savage or sauvage? Sauvage. 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 Okay. Sauvage or sauvage. Uh, I'm, I'm currently learning French right now. So I'm, I'm trying to get my ah, pronunciations, yeah. pronunciations, uh, right. And, uh, it's, it's, I literally just started studying this like, four days ago so oh, nice. don't ah, don't try and quiz me wee wee. I, I, <laughs> exactly see you're good 
Um, but so I got that going on. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm just trying to think if there's something else I need to cover with you guys. We covered so much in our last interview that it's like. I, actually, I, th- I feel like we covered more in this one than we did in the last one, man. I we mean, really we went yeah. into. Yeah, we went into detail on a lot of stuff. Yeah. This has flowed very, very well, in my opinion. Oh, good. Yeah, definitely. Like, good, like, good. Yeah, dude. Like, I feel like we got more detail uh, out of some of the stories. Uh, yeah, dude. It's, it's yeah. It's already been like an awesome, mm-hmm. opposite, awesome episode, man. Okay, you're, yeah. you're too kind. Yeah, if you could, if you can think of anything else, I mean, do you want to do a quick plug? Uh, sure. Just just real quick. Sure. Um, okay, for those that are listening, if if you guys can remember Car Talk, and maybe some of you still listen to Car Talk um, on uh, what is it, National Public Radio? Uh huh. It's you know it was a show about cars, but it was so goddamn entertaining that you would listen to it anyways, whether you knew anything about cars or even cared about cars. Uh, you, you had the two brothers, was it Brick and Brack, Frick and Frack? Uh, <laughs> we do a we, we do a show called I'd Lather Be Shaving, and that is a lot like that in in that way where we're talking about the history of traditional shaving, but we try to make it really 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 entertaining too. So whether you care about the shaving or not, you'll get the history, but you'll also really enjoy it. Um, it's kind of like Wayne's World meets Car Talk meets Antique Roadshow on acid. Dude, and hell it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a morning coffee show that we, we do uh, here in, in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, we did two seasons, and we took probably almost a year break, and we're about to hop into it again and do season three. But really entertaining. I think your audience will enjoy it. It's all about, you know, I say traditional shaving because that's our focus, but we talk about all things male grooming for the most part. Um, and you can find that at I'd lather be shaving dot com. That'll take you right there. I'd lather um, be shaving. Yeah, I'd and, lather and that, be that's, shaving. That's the thing about most of the people that listen to our podcast are like, they're just interested in, you know, stuff. It's just stuff. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and it, it, you guys are hilarious. I mean, you're hilarious, Doug. I mean, I mean, obviously, <laughs> people are going to love you. So, I mean, y'all, y'all listening, check it out. It, it's going to be awesome. I mean, if, if you listen, yeah. if you like all the shenanigans me and Joe get up to every week, then y'all are going to love this show, too. Uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, I, I think I think I think anyone will really enjoy it. Um, and then, of course, there's our my, my site phoenixshaving.com and it's spelled like it sounds phoenixshaving.com that'll get you there and and feel free anyone listening if you have any questions concerns suggestions whatever contact me through the site or pm me on facebook if we're friends i, I can talk about this all day long it's, it's really my passion and i want to see people shaving better it's just you know it's it, you're doing it wrong <laughs> it's, so, it's, it's frustrating to watch and you know but again we don't stop there we also do beard care beard oils beard dot di- natural beard dyes we're, we're artists and makers so everything's made by hand here in our facility in uh, arizona no no harsh chemicals using any of our stuff for the most part wasn't talking about the tequila I'm, I'm, as i'm doing uh, customer service no no, no it's just joking. like pour, pour the tequila in like all the vats of, of <laughs> yeah it's like now it's time for some animal testing honey fill her up <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tequila. <laughs> yeah tequila mockingbird hey. but that's it so yeah thanks guys so much for having me uh, yeah, again dude. let's Absolutely. keep doing this <laughs> definitely dude yeah we oh, gotta we gotta do let's another. do a giveaway too if anyone's listening right oh, now yeah. uh how should we do that I, i'll give away a, a free starter kit for anyone interested in uh in learning how to wet shave uh, um let's do uh i mean let, they, can, what, they can email us or they can get at us on the facebook yeah maybe the first person to email us referring or referencing this podcast uh hit hit us up with just email us directly oh it's, you know what how about yeah it's, it's, take as many people as you can and then just randomly uh give me each a number and then randomly draw yeah. a winner all right that sounds cool, cool. yeah <laughs> hell yeah. yeah dude yeah awesome. so a, like uh, a kit that i mean have you have you done this before like what what all just so they know like what all comes in this, oh yeah in this sure. kit so they it comes with a it. it's a starter kit it's, it has everything you need to know uh need to start traditional shaving it has a safety razor which again heirloom quality you can pass this down to your kids an aftershave shaving soap shaving brush the green ray shaving brush and our ck formula shave soap which is like it's like learning how to drive with a ferrari it's our number one formula one of our best formulas it's a premium uh, ultra premium formula luxury formula so it's really a, a super place to start and uh, you also get instructions with that that'll take you to a video by me <laughs> No, nice. awesome. Yeah, yeah. The best so, part. <laughs> how about we come up with a with a uh, a numerical, you know, out of order between one and ten, and whoever hits that number one, that's who gets the the. Yeah, there we go. That sounds good. That's who get. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool. 
Yeah, and nice. they, can, they can email us at uh, UFO Garage PC at gmail dot com. Boom. And uh, yeah, guys, let's get those emails in. And uh, dude, these these kits, these kits are sick. I, I've uh, you know I've, I've checked them out online. I've seen them in person. They're pretty legit, like a hundred percent. And I've already oh, started awesome. using the product. And like I was telling Doug earlier, like nothing has tempted me to shave more than this box that he has for sale, wow. dude. And I've had this beard for a long time, dude. Shave your neck, time, dude. dude. Shave your neck. That's what I told him. I'm going to have to be a neck shaver, dude. <laughs> but, uh, he said, I'm a neck shaver. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm Giorgio, to... I gave Giorgio from Ancient Aliens to one of our kids. And uh, it was kind of like when I first met him at another event. And I kind of just like, hey, here you go. And then walked away. Uh, back <laughs> nice. Tonight. Back to my table, to, and I was, you know, I was taking it down. It was the end of a. It was at, at the end of Alien Con in uh, Baltimore last year, and I didn't think anything of it. I just wanted them to, you know, try it out or have it, you know. Yeah. And um, next, I get a tap on my shoulder like ten minutes later, and it's Giorgio, and he's like, "Dude, he's like, this is awesome." He's like, "I'm really into packaging, and what's going on here is just like, I, I, I really love." I love your package. So Giorgio likes my package. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was my takeaway. Yes. But uh, no, he was really excited about it. Uh. And so if that tells anybody anything, I, I, I don't know. But um, I'm really proud of it. And it took us years to, to put this thing together. And, and it really is. It's not by a company. It's not. By, I mean, we are a company, but it's not by a faceless company. Right, it's yeah, by right. me. I, we, I, this comes from the heart. It's. Every, I put all the fire. What I would have loved to start with is this kit is what it all comes down to. Yeah. And most shavers, unless you started in the last few years, we, there were not all these options out there as there are now. And so I wish this kit existed when I started up. And, oh, you know, and that said, we also do a huge shaving festival every year called the Big Shaves. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big, Big Shaves West this coming year, 2020, is going to be our sixth year doing it. And it happens this year. It's going to be happening in Phoenix, Arizona. So it's like a shave con. If you're into conferences and whatnot, this one is all traditional male grooming, shaving. We offer free barbershop shaving. We have a barber on scene doing straight razor shaves. We have panel discussions all day. Uh, artisans from all over there. I mean, there's just so much going on. Uh, and it may sound crazy to you now, but once you get bit by that traditional wet shaving bug, you're going to gonna you're really gonna want to find the others. Dude, out that's there. awesome. Yes, you guys should try to make it. We have a uh, another podcaster that show or uh, podcasters that show up as well. The gentleman Scafla has. If you guys haven't heard them, check them out sometime. They're a really great podcast. Cool. Uh, they they show up and they do a live show every year. I mean, there's just so much going on there. And we start like a week before with festivities. Like I do a tour down a tombstone too. I sell tickets to people that <laughs> want to go to tombstone, and I give them the nickel tour because I have tour guide envy. Uh, but we have all types of events up until the day of, and it's just a really great time. And to find out more about that, you just need to go to bigshaveswest dot com, and that's swest like s west southwest dot com, bigshaveswest dot com, and you can find out more about that. The, Site needs to be updated for this coming year, but they'll give you all the info that happened last year, and you can sign up for it to be on the mailing list to learn more about that as we get closer. But yeah, anything awesome. <laughs> yeah, oh, we're doing man. it all. Here. Hell yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we uh, we signed up for your little your little program uh, on the on the website. Uh, and and I think we're we should be hopefully yeah, we get an email. Approved. Yeah, we're approved. At, uh, yeah, I got it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, awesome. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, gotta, I gotta figure affiliate. out that, I gotta figure out that code. Uh, yes, the uh, the affiliate program. So yeah, so we're there now. So he's gonna figure out the code, and we're gonna be putting up Phoenix shaving on the on our website. Yeah. yeah. So oh, also, if really you guys cool. wanna wanna check that out, you can go directly to our website, or just go to phoenixshaving.com, yeah. and you can find it either way. But uh, eventually, we'll have the promo code, and you guys. can come check us out and uh use the promo code on that i think it's uh, the link the code is in the link so as long as they use the link we provided you okay your yeah. code will ar- automatically be in there okay cool awesome yeah Sweet. people love that <laughs> well, cool a lot man. of fun guys yes awesome so, dude let's do this again sometimes so let's check back in and i'll see how joe's doing with his neck beard and uh <laughs> <laughs> and how ben's doing with his new puppy <laughs> <laughs> yes dude yes. absolutely Definitely have Absolutely. you back on the show again, man. We got we got a, quite a few guests coming up here pretty soon, uh, but yeah, definitely in a couple months, man. Let's get let's oh, get sure. you back on sure. again, or at least Father's Day. I want to be there to talk about shaving some more. We'll break it down next Sweet. time. Well, yeah, that yeah, would be cool. Yeah. That'd be we awesome. Do like a little Father's Day uh, gift thing or something yeah. too. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, so guys, keep in touch. let me know who wins, and I'll ship it right out to them ASAP. Awesome. Uh, I say give them a give them a few days after you release the show, and uh, just a you know create some interest in it and yeah, uh, yeah I'll, I'll i'll shoot it out asap definitely sounds good man awesome thank you guys thanks again Already, for being brother. on the show brother ciao all yes, right sir. talk to you later <laughs> peace
Nice. Already, guys. Dude, that was awesome. Yes, yes. That was Doug with uh, phoenixshaving.com. And uh, yeah, man, that was that was a good little episode. Man, that man. was so fun. I he's love such talking a good to guy, Doug. Bro. Yeah, I love I, talking to Doug. I can listen to him talk for for hours. Dude, man. he's just so knowledgeable and like so much like random yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And my head is full of random stuff. <laughs> like I don't know anything like important. Yeah. But like, <laughs> dude, like yeah, Doug knows so much about like so many random random topics. It's awesome. I love it. I love it. So yeah, we definitely got to have Doug back on pretty uh, soon. I'm glad you remembered the um, telephone. Yeah. Casa. Casa. I'm glad you remembered that part. Yeah, dude, it's it's hilarious. <laughs> if you haven't watched it in Spanish, you got to give it a shot. Well, you showed me that little piece. It was yeah, pretty funny. It's pretty funny. So yeah, guys, y'all check that out too. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, don't forget to check out phoenixshaving.com. And we're going to be doing that little giveaway, guys. So make sure uh, you email us and and we'll have we'll we'll pick at random yeah well so i want to do like in, uh, from one to ten uh-huh. uh just do like let's come up with a random order from one to ten uh-huh. and then have that for for us and so depending on how many you know the people that or, uh email us uh-huh. do it like that so like our first email let's say the first number is one right. then they then they get the the package or whatever uh-huh. or the, the the kit or yeah you know okay. what i mean yeah 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 cool <clears throat> or or just take the emails Print them on a piece of paper, cut them out in strips, and put them in a hat and pull one out. I love that. Okay, so I was like really proud of that idea that I just came up with. That's why I was trying to explain it more. Like, all right, wait, wait. But I like that one way more. Let's do that. <laughs> That's way more fun. I think it's because I'm not a computer person. I didn't understand what you were talking about. Uh, yeah, I can. I was so proud of myself. That's way more fun. Yeah, let's do that. Let's cut them out in a piece of paper. And we could do like a live, a live uh, uh, a little video. You know, yeah, a little video. Yeah, let's do so, it. We yeah. can't make the pieces of paper too small. <laughs> let's print them out. Let's print them out on like alien heads or like cool. like pug pug sized pieces of paper. <laughs> That'd be all right, dope. that sounds good. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, are you all finished? You you have anything else I, to say? I, my my brain is full of amazing ideas and and uh, information. I think this has been a, a great podcast, man. <laughs> it has been a good one. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. This has been another episode of UFO Garage. And by the way, fuck you, Greg. <laughs>